Hi, this is uh, Paul Clifford. I'm just going to run you through a, an approach by the knee. Every attending has their own approach, and every attending, of course, is right. But it is true, no matter what approach you take, you do need an organized approach to uh, read MRI and MSK in particular. So we're going to start with the ligament structures. Medial collateral ligament runs down to six centimeters below the level of the tibial plateau and inserts distally. The lateral collateral ligament starts, complex starts with the iliotibial band. The fibular collateral ligament, which runs obliquely up from the fibular head to the femur and joins at the fibular head the biceps femoris. Beneath the fibular collateral ligament, like a baby under a blanket, is a popliteal tendon, which inserts onto the femur. The anterior and posterior cruciate ligament should be evaluated, and many things should be evaluated, particularly the ACL, on multiple planes. And you can see the ACL on the horizontal, sagittal, and axial plane. The ACL begins in the lateral femoral condyle and extends anteriorly and inferiorly, caudally to the level of the, ilio, to the, level of the tibia, that's seen in its entirety here. There are two bands, the anterior, medial, and posterior lateral band, which are sometimes clearly distinct. The PCL, a posterior cruciate ligament, begins on the medial femoral condyle and inserts posteriorly on the tibia. As I said, looking here at the sagittal image, uh, the cruciate ligaments, and all ligaments actually, should be evaluated in all planes, if possible. The anterior cruciate ligament is seen here. It has a straight or taut course, relatively taut course, and it parallels the area of Blumenstadt's line, rather, which is the roof of the femoral notch. The PCL is also seen, or posterior cruciate ligament is also seen on the sagittal image. You can also see these uh, on the axial images, which we'll show you in just one second. On the axial sequence, the ACL is seen going black to bone, high on the uh, femoral condyle, uh, lateral femoral condyle. It extends caudally into anterior, medial, and posterior lateral bands to insert on the tibia. Posterior cruciate ligament is somewhat less well seen on the axial images, but is seen here uh, on the medial femoral condyle extending caudally in this case. Evaluation of the menisci are carried out um, first on sagittal images, but other imaging planes may be of some uh, help in some cases, particularly the um, coronal and even sometimes the axial plane. Menisci are seen as triangular shaped structures. Um, and low signal intensity on uh, short T sequences. And posterior root is seen here, posterior medial meniscus, comes into the posterior horn, goes into the body of the meniscus, into the anterior horn with the anterior root inserting on the anterior tibia. Lateral meniscus is a little bit different. Lateral meniscus has anterior and posterior horns and body as previously described, but <coughs> posterior Posteriorly, in the region of the popliteus tendon, there's a popliteal hiatus where the popliteus tendon passes into the joint from outside the joint. And uh, there's an actual appearance of a break in this region, so-called popliteal hiatus. Sometimes we can see this better on long TR images. Here is the region of the popliteus uh, hiatus. On long TR images, you can see the posterior root of the meniscus and the popliteal hiatus at this point. Uh, with some fluid within it and the popliteal tendon passing into the region. Next thing to evaluate is uh, chondral structures in both medial and lateral compartments. You can see the chondral structures as gray signal intensity areas on long TR images at the uh, femoral and tibial surfaces. In the sagittal plane, we can also see it in the uh, patellofemoral compartment we'll talk about later. And you see the same sort of thing on the medial side, the well-defined cartilage here being intermediate gray and in signal. We look for breaks in that cartilage and grade the cartilage defects accordingly. We look at the cartilage at the teller cartilage here. Here's the medial facet, lateral facet. And as we swing down into the region of the trochlea and the femoral area that articulates with the patella, we can see the cartilage here as well. These surfaces are also well seen on the sagittal images. While looking at the patella, we note that the medial and lateral retinaculi, this being the medial retinaculum and the lateral retinaculum, are easily delineated. These help stabilize the patella, guide it through the trochlea. We can also see in this plane the quadriceps tendon and the quadriceps expansion over the anterior aspect of the patella, and then the patellar tendon itself or patellar ligament extending caudally 
down to the level of the tibial uh, tuber tuberosity. Once again, in the sagittal plane, we see the patellar tendon here and the quadriceps tendon here. Note that the quadriceps tendon may have uh, some heterogeneity within it. This actually represents the tendons, the multiple tendons that make up the quadriceps tendon, this being the rectus femoris, this being the medial uh, vastus medialis and lateralis, and this being the intermedius. Next part we talk about is the synovium and soft tissues. We can see the synovial space here with a small amount of fluid within it. This particular person does not have fluid in the suprapatellar bursa and does not have a large effusion. Okay. We also note the hophus fat pad, the prefemoral fat pad, and the quadriceps fat pads as normal structures. We look in the pre-tibial and prepatellar tendon areas looking for bursae, effusions, or masses. Posteriorly, we can see the articulation of the uh, fabella with the lateral femoral condyle here with cartilage surfaces in apposition. We can see the lateral gastrocnemius, the medial gastrocnemius. We can see on the sagittal plane the vastus medialis, the vastus lateralis. We can see all these structures uh, including the biceps femoris muscle as it extends cartilage to insert on the fibula. The axial plane is a good one to evaluate uh, muscles and neurovascular structures. You can see all the aforementioned muscles here, the medial and the lateral gastrocnemius, the popliteus muscle. <clears throat> and we can see the biceps, the semimembranosus, the sartorius, gracilis, and tendinosus tendons and muscles extending uh, down to insert on the pes anterine, the medial tibia. Note the uh, artery and vein in the posterior tibial nerve here. Posterior tibial nerve runs for a long period of time in tandem with the fibular or peroneal nerve. The level of the knee, the peroneal nerve branches off and extends out laterally, goes around the fibular head, breaks into two separate branches and supplies the anterior compartment consisting of the tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis and extensor digitorum, and the lateral compartment consisting of the peroneal muscles. Finally, or at some point in your evaluation, you have to look at all the osseous structures. Some people look at this first, some people look at it in tandem with the cartilage evaluation, but it can be looked at any point as long as uh, you are sure that you look over the marrow signal, look at the cortex, make sure it's not disrupted, that there's no edema or evidence of mass. And again, marrow and bone is evaluated in all planes. Thank you.